All right, the reviews are in. They liked it. So where could we go from here? How about we make a few things better and a few things a lot worse. A little over a year after the release of Sonic Team's first ever Nintendo exclusive Sonic game, the sequel hit shelves, and then a year after that, the third game. Kinda reminds me of the Spyro Trilogy's release schedule, except those were full 3D platformers, therefore a, a bit more impressive to be released in such a short time frame. Regardless of that though, Sonic Team and Dimps came together once again to give us Sonic Advance 2. I think it's pretty widely accepted that most sequels tend to not be as good as the games that came before them, though there are some exceptions to that rule. Sonic Advance 2 also seems to fit that bill, since I've seen tons of people say that it's the best game in the entire Advance series. Why is that, though? I thought Advance 1 was pretty great. Sure, it was a little rough around the edges and it caused some mild childhood trauma, but what more could they do, right? Well, for one thing, the presentation in this game is a lot flashier. I mean, look at that intro sequence! The story also has more of a presence in this game, which is a nice thing, because I do enjoy me a good story. As far as typical Sonic stories go, it is pretty basic, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Why don't we start off with level talk instead? Alright guys, I'm gonna level with you. I think the things that people enjoy most about this game are the levels, because it sure isn't some of the other things that are in this game. Compared to Advance 1, it's like night and day. Whereas in the first game, the platforming elements of Sonic took the reins, Sonic Advance 2 was all about speed. Whether that's a good thing or not is really up to you, but when you play these levels, they will fly by. Even if you're not using a flight-capable character. Aside from the level design favoring speed more, they also improved how the characters move through the levels. Every character now has the ability to press the R button and hold a certain direction on the D-pad to launch in that direction, and in most cases, it's extremely satisfying to launch forwards through the levels and keep your momentum even after hitting a spring or running off a ramp. These moves can also be used to reach higher pathways in the levels, or grab hard-to-reach collectibles, but again, we'll talk about those later. Just like Advance 1, Advance 2 has seven new zones for you to explore, except this time, they all have two acts. The seven zones are then followed by a small boss rush and final boss, and then a unique supersonic fight to top things off. First off, we've got Leaf Forest Zone. It's your typical green Sonic level, except they actually made some kind of effort to make it stand apart from the rest of them. Sure, you can still see some checkerboards here and there, but it's a nice change of pace. Here you'll be running through loops and corkscrews and learning all about the game's new mechanics, like these little rotating things and the ramps. Believe me, you're gonna want to figure these out if you have any desire of reaching the supersonic fight. This might be a good time to talk about the intros and outros to the levels, though. At the start of every level that isn't a boss encounter, your character gets yeeted into action by these things. Yeah, you don't see that at the Olympics. If you press right on the control pad with the right timing, you get a speed boost that'll only occasionally get you killed or damaged. Then, at the end of the stage, you'll speed by these goal poles, and depending on your speed, you'll get more points and your ending animation will look a tad different. I told you, this ain't your grandpa's Sonic Advance. This is all about speed. Even though Act 2 doesn't really change things up that much, the end is where things are switched up a bit. Unlike Sonic Advance, Sonic Advance 2 doesn't house a boss at the end of its Act 2s, but instead, after you complete Act 2, your character is sent to a boss act. And this is where my problems with this game begin. Every boss in this game, with the exception of one of them, is fought while chasing them down. When I said this game was all about speed, I was not exaggerating. First up, we've got a sequel, the Egg Hammer Tank 2. Yeah, because that worked so well the last time, right? They say this guy has an IQ of 300, but he must have got that from one of those online tests. Look. I've had one of those things tell me I'm a genius too, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case, because I once fell for a Google April Fool's Day prank that had to do with smelling things through your phone or computer. Google knows. Look it up. To give him some credit though, this boss is actually a little bit more threatening than the last one, though not because of the hammer itself. Since you're constantly running in these encounters, the game plays totally different than the main stages. You better find your sea legs quick, because momentum will be your worst enemy here. Once you strike the boss, you get thrown backwards thanks to physics, and if you don't catch yourself using some kind of momentum-saving move, you gotta take the time to sprint all the way back up to the contraption before you're allowed to hit it again. If you're playing as Sonic, this is where his new and improved Air Dash comes in handy, though. 
I briefly mentioned it in the last video, but by double tapping the direction Sonic is facing, he flips through the air and gains some speed. Though in this game, it's been buffed a ludicrous amount. Oh, and it's not like he's not attacking you either, because he is. And after this boss, the combination of his attacks and the annoying change of controls will probably leave you seeing red by the end of the game. For this boss, though, you'll be lulled into a false sense of security, because it isn't all that bad. All you have to do is avoid Eggman's hammer swings, and eventually you'll ruin the Doctor's day and set free the bunny that's been screaming your head off the entire fight. What's this? A new character? That's exciting! And what's more exciting is that we get a small story scene to introduce her as well. This is Cream the Rabbit and her god of destruction, Cheese. We learn that she wasn't just minding her own business when Eggman kidnapped her, but she was actually searching for her mother, who Eggman also kidnapped. Yeah, it really do be like that sometimes, don't it? With that motivation, Cream sets off with Sonic to try and get her back, and teach some bosses the true meaning of fear along the way. So basically, this game operates on Sonic Adventure logic. Once you meet the characters in-game, you're able to head back out to the menu and select them to take on the game as that character instead. When I was a kid, I actually liked this a lot more than Advance, just handing you all the characters on a silver platter, since it felt like I really earned the right to play as the others. Plus, it is really funny to see these guys being whipped around during the boss encounters. I promise you, I'm not a bad person. It's not like I ever finished the game, though, because, like I've said plenty of times in the last review, I was awful at this game. Zone 2 trades in the lush greenery of Leaf Forest for the skin-singeing terror of Hot Crater. What I like about this stage is, is that in any other game, this stage would have been about going slow and taking your time, sort of like Marble Zone from Sonic 1. But instead, the game stays consistent and speed prevails overall. I know I've mentioned that a lot already, and even though the levels are geared more towards speed, it doesn't really mean this game is a hold right to win type deal. You still need to have the reflexes to take certain paths, and most of the time you're using your special moves to help reach those areas. It is immensely satisfying to maintain your speed for as long as you can and just blow through huge chunks of the stage without stopping. But don't get me wrong, you can play the stages at whatever speed you want. It'll just be more fun if you're barreling through things at a breakneck pace. Not that Sonic has a neck, but you know what I mean. The zone feels a lot like Secret Base from the first game, but less enclosed. Like, for example, you can't do stuff like this in Secret Base. And here comes the Egg Bomber Tank! Very creative, Doctor! This time, Eggman is toting around a giant gun! Which is unsurprisingly more effective at beating woodland creatures than a wrecking ball! This boss's sweet spot is a little finicky sometimes. When I went to hit it, occasionally I'd take damage as well, which wasn't super comforting. Its initial pattern is easy enough to work with, but once you enter Phase 2 and the cannon bit is gone, it almost feels like there's no pattern anymore and he just shoots when it's the most inconvenient for you. Ain't that the story of my life? After he takes off, you'll notice there's no new character this time. Bummer. And here we are with Zone 3, or should I say the best zone of them all? It's Music Plant Zone! This entire stage is music to my ears. The music is great, the visuals are vibrant and fun, and Sonic and the gang even get to have a little more fun here, bouncing off cymbals and xylophone blocks. This stage is just oozing with charm, and that's something I think the Sonic series has been seriously lacking in lately. When they made this level, they clearly just let loose and threw in a bunch of ideas they thought would be fun, and I can respect that. One thing I wanted to point out, too, is that if you look at the level list, you'll notice that the obligatory casino stage isn't here. So Music Plant is the closest thing we get, and I am totally on board with that. Music Plant is also really reminiscent of Rayman's Bandland for me, except it's nowhere near as frustrating, which is great! This stage, man, it's just, it's just magical. That's the best way I could describe it. Sure, there's some frustrating enemy placement here and there, but I'm more than willing to forgive that because of how much fun the rest of the stage is. Once you reach the end of it, though, you come face to face with the Egg Totem. This weird paddy wagon looking contraption shoots its spiked segments at Sonic, and when they're fully extended, a little turret pops out on either the top or the bottom. You can destroy the turrets with a good few bops, or you can ignore them entirely if you're careful. By using the segments, you can throw yourself at the cockpit, and eventually the segments will start getting quicker because Eggman is getting scared now. Eggman will also start rearranging the segments in an effort to throw you off, but a few more hits and Eggman retreats with his tail between his legs. Tails is then set free from what looks like a super unpleasant ride-along, and now you've got the ability to play as him as well. Tails thanks Sonic for the save, as Sonic muses as to what Eggman is up to this time. Gee, Sonic, I don't know, maybe it's the whole turn fuzzy things into metal again. He seems to do that a lot. Sonic being Sonic wastes no time and rushes off, and Tails being Tails follows closely behind. Alright, so for those who have been around for a bit, you might know my policy on ice levels. Ice levels aren't n ice levels. Though, I do have to break that rule a bit here because surprisingly, it's a lot more tolerable than the pure hell that was Ice Mountain Zone. 
Overall, this zone is another fun one. I really don't have as many problems with the levels as I did last time, but in case you're missing my complaining, don't you worry, I'll be doing plenty of that later. Ice Paradise, great name by the way, has these neat little ice slides, and again, the unique animations found here are a nice touch. Once you're on these things though, you can't control your character anymore aside from jumping, so you'd better be ready to disengage if ever necessary. Arrow Egg? Doctor, you've broken your typical naming scheme. I'm disappointed. Now this thing can either be a bit annoying or pathetically easy. The machine flies ahead of you and drops bombs which explode and threaten to damage you if you don't jump over them. You can strike this boss by jumping at the disc floating behind the machine when it's horizontal. You'll then bounce up and be able to strike the cockpit, or get lodged in there like I did and basically end the fight in a few seconds. No big whoop. If you don't end it quickly though, there is a bit of a big whoop. The bombs start dropping super fast and the disc changes back and forth pretty rapidly, so it's a lot harder to get an opportunity to attack. No character encounter here either. If you hadn't realized by now, we get a new character every other zone, so who will we be seeing next? Alright, so much like Ice Mountain from Sonic Advance, Sky Canyon was the run killer for me as a kid. Only difference between this and Ice Mountain though is that I never beat this one when I was a kid. Yeah, this is where my adventure ended and not really upset about that because they went crazy with the bottomless pits in this stage. Look at this footage. This is the start of Act 2 and they give zero funnel cakes about my feelings. Also, I died here like three times because I find it hard to learn from my mistakes for whatever reason. And it wouldn't be a sky level without a constant reminder that you're in the sky, right? Oh wait, sure it would be. We really didn't need this ridiculous layer of clouds to follow us through the entire zone. The amount of times I thought I was about to fall into a pit and then didn't and had to shelve my last will and testament for later use is honestly more than I'm willing to admit. Just no. This entire zone is just no. This should be a textbook example of how to not design a stage. And this isn't even the final level. This is harder than the final level, how did that happen? And it's pretty fitting for a stage that drives me up the wall would also have a boss that does the same. This is the Egg Saucer, and oh man, is this thing a doozy. And by that, I mean it is not a doozy. Like usual, you're giving chase to this thing, and you know, that's whatever, but this thing has an insta-kill attack. Yeah, so not the final level, and it's the hardest, and not the final boss, and it can just kill you. Aside from the legendary smack of death, it can also give you a regular old smack, and this laser cannon fires an incredibly quick and hard to see beam attack. Frustration, thy name is Egg Saucer. Also, Knuckles here is protected by some spikes on the bottom of the cockpit, so you need to strike the top of it, which is almost always certainly guarded by this dang hand. I got a hand at the Eggman. This is a pretty smart design. Also, yeah, I did say Knuckles, because as you can see, he's not being held captive. The only thing that's being held captive is my suspension of disbelief. When you beat this machine to a bloody pulp, Sonic figures out that Eggman tricked Knuckles. Again! Bro, how many games have we been through together? Like eight? It hurts that... that you can't just find it in your heart to trust me. I know trust is hard to earn and it's very easily broken, but... What have I done to deserve... this treatment? Ah, yeah, whatever, trust me or don't. Sonic will just keep on running away from what matters most. Knuckles, on the other hand, vows vengeance against the Doctor and follows close behind. Also, Knuckles' eyes are blue in this scene instead of purple. I guess someone really blew it there, huh? Techno base? More like, tech, no thank you, I'd rather not be here, base. Zing! Nah, just kidding, this one isn't that bad compared to the last one. Where I praised Music Plant for being bright and colorful, this stage is actually a bit too colorful. It just kinda looks like a mess to me, but the circuit board in the background is sorta neat, I guess. Here, the rails, spikes, and bumpers are all stylized to fit the level, which is kinda neat. Nothing, however, could possibly prepare you for the frustration that follows this stage. Here we have the Egg Go Round. I really like the names of some of these. They're very creative. Too bad, I don't like anything else about them. This boss was forged in the fires of hell made from the scrap metal of every frustrating boss this series has ever seen since its inception back in 1991. At first glimpse, it doesn't look that bad. Just jump on the platforms to hit Eggman where it hurts. But gosh darn, they had to go and make it as frustrating as Fire Truck. The silver platforms rotate. The gold platforms have spikes that pop in and out of existence. And let's not forget that you're constantly moving towards the thing, which screws up your precise jumping. And there are tiny little projectiles being fired at you that half the time you can hardly see because you're focused on keeping up your speed and not landing on the spikes or being thrown into them after damaging the thing. Just, oh boy. This one really wound me up while I was playing. I just flat out did not have a good time, and it got me wondering again. 
why put something in a game if it's not fun? I've always wondered that. Like, do they just not know when they're making it? Wasn't there anyone playtesting this that said, hey, maybe, you know, instead of doing that with this boss, you could make it, I don't know, fun? Were they all task bots or something? <sighs> Whatever, shake it off. It's time for Egg Utopia Zone. We're on the home stretch, y'all. Here we come across cannons that shoot Sonic all over the place. Spike balls that you couldn't possibly be able to avoid unless you knew the level layout already. And gravity mechanics. Hooray! Getting some serious Cosmic Angel vibes from this one. We also have these poles that you need to jump off of, boosters that throw you forwards, and one thing my eagle eyes noticed here was that there are actually some really nice pixel art recreations of the spinners from Sonic Adventure. So that's neato, burrito. Pretty harmless stage all around. Not sure if I liked it that much, especially because of some of the really rude enemy placement, but at this point, I'm just really glad that I'm not fighting a boss. You just couldn't let me have this one, could you? The egg? Frog? Yeah, okay, whatever. You're the genius. Ugh, guys, I don't like this one either. This time it's all about gravity manipulation, though I didn't figure that out for a solid 10 minutes. Eggman pilots his frog all around the stage, dropping bombs on you, and you need to flip the gravity to avoid the attacks and then play with it to land some hits on the guy. As you hit him, he goes faster and faster and it's just so not fun. I'm sorry. As a first time player to most of these fights, they're just so infuriating. Like, maybe after you've played them 10 times a piece, it's, it's a little better, but just blech. That's the last thing I'm gonna say on the matter, though. Or, you know, maybe I lied, because before the final boss, how's about we refight every single boss in a boss rush? Yeah! That sounds like something I wanna do! Why? I was okay with the boss rush in X-Zone back in the original game because it was two throwback bosses and then the final battle, but here we gotta go through seven bosses. Again! Including the Egg Frog, which we just got finished fighting! Sure, they make things a little bit easier on you by making each boss and their subsequent breakable parts take less hits, but still, I didn't like 90% of these things the first time! I thought I was playing Sonic the Hedgehog, not f Mega Man! So after suffering through all those again, we finally reach the final boss, the Super Egg Robo Z. Weird, considering we're in XX Zone, you think it'd be the Super Egg Robo X, but let's be real, Eggman isn't good at naming things. You might notice that Sonic finally gets a chance to rest his whittle legs here, since this boss doesn't actually move. Thank goodness. All you need to do here is avoid his rocket fist attacks, don't get pressed into the spiked ceiling too many times, yep, no crush death here, it has that on Mania at least, and then bash this thing's skull in several times until finally, the quest is over. Kind of. Sonic falls from space as the Egg Utopia causes a massive nuclear disaster in the distance. Sonic lands back in Leaf Forest and chooses to not mourn the losses from the catastrophe in the distance, but instead pose next to some stupid little birds. Out of sight, out of mind, I guess? Oh, but of course that isn't it because we forgot the Chaos Emeralds. Dang, I was looking for those special springs this whole time, but I didn't see any. I did see a lot of these weird rings, though. But I'm sure those don't have anything to do with the special stages, right? Dimps, when I said I liked special rings in my Sonic games, I meant like this, not this. If you're wondering about the Chaos Emeralds like I was, there are these little rings in each of the stages that'll lead you to your Chaos Emerald. But the kicker is, there's seven of them, and you need to collect all of them in one life. So you basically need to have memorized the entire level and take the perfect pathway through to even have a chance to see the special stage. Remember how I mentioned things that weren't fun? Well, this is one of them. Do you know how eager I was to collect seven special rings in Sky Canyon and not die once? I was over the moon zone excited I was. God, I hate everything. Not only is this asking way too much of the player, but it's also really irritating, even if you have a guide. I wasn't about to play Leaf Forest 90 times to solidify the best route through the place, but imagine way back when this game released, there probably weren't any really accessible guides. I couldn't even get through Sky Canyon when I was a kid, let alone search through the entire thing with a metal detector. 
Honestly, when you're zipping through these levels on a normal playthrough, you might not even realize you're collecting these things you go by them so quickly. I never thought I'd say this, but at least in Sonic Unleashed, where collecting stupid arbitrary metals is also necessary to finish the game, you have the Werehog segments that are slowed the heck down so you can actually see these things coming. This is like trying to collect every metal in the daytime stages, except worse, because you can't die. And there's seven of them. And that's precisely the last time I'll ever give Unleashed any sort of compliment. So you get yourself your seven special rings, you beat the stage, and bam bam, anger and ham, you find yourself in a special stage. I'd be confident in saying that these are probably the easiest special stages in the entire series, though I can't say that for sure because I only really played the first one. It's not a half pipe, and it's not a rotating maze, it's just a giant flat playground full of rings, and Zero from Sonic Adventure. Just pick up the amount of rings it tells you to at the top while fighting against the super awkward controls, and you get your shiny rock. They needlessly overcomplicated these things this time, and never having played Sonic Advance 3, I'm really hoping that they figured it out. Third time's the charm, right? Once you've got all seven of your emeralds as Sonic, and rebeat the XX zone, you're treated to a nice scene of some invisible force using the power of suck to nab yet more animals, and Cream's mom again. The squad rallies up, and seeing Cream cry in front of him, Sonic decides that enough is enough, and he transforms into Super Sonic and flies off. And finally, it's the true conclusion. True Area 53. What does that even mean? What is that name? I bet Eggman named this place. And speaking of Eggman, he then rides up in his brand spanking new True Area 53 boss, or as I like to call it, the Egg Chameleon. And the fight begins. It's definitely more of a supersonic fight than the last game had, at least. Supersonic actually flies around this time, and the goal is to smack these rockets into Eggman's noggin. Eggman will attack you with an ice beam and a suck attack. Just be careful, though, because if you get hit by the ice beam, I'm not convinced there's a way to get out. Sonic shimmies a little bit, but no amount of button mashing I did ever spared him the suck. Oh, and if you get caught by the suck attack, it sucks away your rings, and then spits Sonic out squeaky clean, but usually a lot less alive than he was before. Once you're done humoring Eggman, he drops a capsule and it falls down to the earth below. Sonic desperately tries to stop it, but disaster strikes as he reverts back into regular Sonic right as Vanilla and all the Flickies are released. Thankfully, there were no land animals in the capsule, or else Sonic would have had to choose who lived and died, and I really don't think that's his call to make. Sonic grabs Vanilla in the nick of time, spins around, landing on his feet like the cat he is, and that's game. What's that? Amy Rose is playable too? Oh, I guess she didn't get the memo about the dang world ending, so she just stayed home. She does decide to show herself, though, after you collect all seven emeralds with all four characters, and you know what, Amy? I like you, but I'm sorry. You ain't worth it. Speaking of characters, though, I figured I'd at least go over a few things before we wrap up. Sonic Tails and Knuckles are pretty much the same as they were in advance, with the exception of the new trick moves and Sonic's buffed air dash. Cream being a totally new character comes with a totally new moveset. Using her friend Cheese, she can quite literally cheese the game. Look at my time in Sonic's XX Zone, compared to Cream's. Two minutes! And that's because all you gotta do when fighting these bosses is mash the B button like there's no tomorrow, and even the mightiest warriors will crumble before you. Cream can also fly, and do the flight cancel that Tails lacks. Sure, she can't fly for as long as Tails, but honestly, all her other benefits far exceed anything Tails can do, so just play as Cream. And then there is Amy, if you can manage to unlock her, or just use a 100% save file like I did, and she's totally different from her previous appearance in Sonic Advance, which is nice. She still uses her hammer for a variety of different attacks, but now she has a spin dash and can curl into a ball, which is a welcome addition especially if they're going to make you suffer when trying to unlock her. And we have one last unlockable in the form of the Tiny Chow Garden, this time not available from the start for whatever reason. To unlock it, you need to grab yourself the Seven Emeralds as just one character and finish the game. Still not worth it. Just play Advance 1 if you want the Chow stuff. It's almost identical aside from one minigame that honestly is kind of fun, but still it is super not worth it. And, of course, the obligatory Sonic Mania mod plug, because I can't forget my roots, now can I? If you watched my Top 10 Sonic Mania Mods of 2018 video, you might remember this one from the number one spot. Sonic Advance 2 Mania. Oh boy, where do I begin? You get all five characters from Advance 2, with Amy and Cream replacing Mighty and Ray respectively. You get several stages from Advance 2, ported over super faithfully to Mania in glorious HD 60fps, 
And with it being ported to Mania comes the superior gameplay. So you tell me, why isn't everyone playing this? Sure, you lack the trick system from Advance 2, and truthfully I was attempting to trick after I hit every single ramp and spring, but I'm much more a fan of the massive gameplay upgrade that comes with switching over to Mania. So if you've got Mania and you're hankering to play the best parts of Sonic Advance 2 without any of the frustrating bosses, this would be a good one to download. And wow, that was longer than the Advance 1 video, but that's Sonic Advance 2! Better in some areas, and a lot worse in others in my opinion. Despite how much I enjoyed the stages themselves, I don't know if I can really say I like this more than Advance 1. It's certainly fun and I can go back to it, but I'm not touching those bosses again if I can help it. And now we've just got one more game to tackle in this trilogy, so sometime in the future I'll be playing through Sonic Advance 3 for the first time ever. And oh man, I have heard polarizing things about this game. But how will I feel about it? Oh god, I'm sure I'll find something to dislike, because I often do. Yeah, sorry, Negative Nancy here. And that's gonna be all for today, so if you like this video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord to keep up with more reviews and other things that aren't reviews, because I do a lot of things. If you really, really like this, you could also share it around, help me get a little bit more buzz, and please feel free to let me know what you liked and didn't like about this in the comments, since I'm still kind of learning. But anyway, I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current sponsors, who are... Jeremy, Twisted Tom, Alex the Lonely Boy, Silva PhD, Knuckles Channel 3, and Knuckles Atlas Requiem, Supersonic 99 of CCI Games, Nick46, Jaded Indolent, Cosmic Mushroom, Lucas Tallman, Nico the Person, Mitron, Kenneth Gutierrez, Henry S, Rob Morrison, Mega Traffic Cone Creative, and Mike TGC. Thanks so much for sponsoring, it really means a lot. If you have any interest in becoming a sponsor yourself, go ahead and click that cool join button beneath the video, and you can see all the perks, such as getting shoutouts at the end of every single video on stream. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.